Hello and welcome to this special episode of Tea Time as we take a look at the Nollywood section of the entertainment industry and how it fared in 2019. My name is Elsie Godwin and of course I've got my co-anchors Ewari Waritu and Benny Yak. What's up ladies? How are you doing? I'm alright. <clears throat> Still feeling kind of sleepy though, but hey, it's all good. Mm. How does it feel to see the last day in 2019? Don't, don't start with you because you say it's a normal day. Please, Ewa, how does it feel for you? For me, I mean, it's exciting and I'm grateful for life, mm -hmm. you know, that in my life today, I feel like it's just an opportunity, it's like grace. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about it, 2020, we'll see what happens. Now we can listen to Benny. I'm a humanist, mm -hmm. that's my religion. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not particular about dates and events. Mm. I'm, I'm particular about who I am as a human being and what other human beings are to me. And so who did you become this year? Who did I become this year? I became more of, I need to find the right word, just a word to qualify what I became more of this year. Um, there was there was a whole lot of acceptance I had to do this year of things. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and that um, it's okay for you not to have what you want all the time. Mm. I accepted rejection differently. You know, that it's okay for people to reject you. And, mm -hmm. But don't make that rejection the rejection of you by yourself. It just means it wasn't meant to be. Okay, and I there's think really nothing wrong with that. You are going to keep going philosophical. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, going to, I'm even going to change the mood of the I'm show. I'm weak. Like, what? <laughs> so we have to have a special tea time for Benny. You have to tell us how 2019 went, right? Okay, but it's been an interesting 2019. And we thank you, our viewer, for consistently following tea time. However, it was even more interesting because of all the key players in the industry. They never failed to spill some tea. And for this reason, we have to set aside our cups sometimes and discuss. Sometimes Sometimes heated and other times we laugh it off. Admits the drama from actors and industry giants. They also give us movies, some good, some bad. Some will leave you wondering, oh God, why didn't I just use my time for better things, right? But we love them all, the effort and the obvious improvement. To discuss 2019 content with focus on movies that made it to the cinemas, we have one of the most influential critics working in the Nigerian culture space. He has attended critics program in Berlin, Stockholm, and Locarno. His work can be found extensively on Why Ninja. He has also been published in Variety, IndieWire, and African Arguments. Thank you, Wilfred Okoche, for coming. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you for, for coming. Me. Hi, Rod. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so how would you sum up um, the productions for 2019? Um, 2019 has been like every other year, the past five years, the past half decade, in that there's, um, there's always progress, but there's also those people who have refused to move and you have to, you know, drag them along <laughs> kicking and screaming. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's like more of the same. So yes, the movies are getting better, but we've been saying that for the last five years. Better in what sense right. though? In terms of production values, uh -huh. in terms of um, us appreciating that there's a format for telling stories on the big screen, cinema. Uh -huh. Because Nollywood is essentially a, a video video platform. Its mm -hmm. origins is in video. Mm -hmm. So people haven't necessarily understood that it's a different format, you know. On it's still film, but you know, it's a different format for the big screens or films that go to cinema. So this past decade has been us just navigating those, you know, those spaces and those consoles. So yeah, there's been good, there's been not so good and there's been Terrible, right. <laughs> you know. But let's let's talk about content wise. Okay, you know, and then um, creating and changing narratives. Mm -hmm. our, our movies seem to stick to the same script all the time. You just just have um, different names they give to it. But content wise, how would you assess the, the Nollywood industry for 2019? I, I don't. I don't particularly buy that they stick to a different script. I mean, maybe the ones that are in your face uh. are the ones that kind of are similar, mm. but that's because they are trying to make money. It's the same thing with Hollywood. If you say, you might be tempted to say they only make superhero films, you know, and in many ways, all those superhero films are the same story, good guy, bad guy. 
So yeah, maybe those ones you see in your faces might be, you know, what how he described it. Same mm -hmm. films, different faces. But you have to look be more distinct and more more, more like same same faces. You know. Yeah, yeah. So different again, script, more same cast. I mean. So you could uh, you could argue uh, you could yeah that's uh, that's valid. But also there are new people who have been working who have been in big productions this year. I mean, the Living in Brundage, for example, the sequel mm. had a totally new guy we've not seen yeah, him before, right. and he was quite you know he did fantastic. Yes, yes, well. yes, I saw that. Yes. yes. Okay, so still talking about content. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, we have lazy writers now? <laughs> I mean, a lot of people will say that you just go to the cinema and you already know what happens at the end of the movie. Even if it's not similar, but it's just some lazy story of somebody dropping a baby, somebody picking it up, and then... Do okay, you agree with okay. that? I won't say lazy write, writers. Mm. Lazy storytelling, maybe. Mm. But I wouldn't really put it at the fault of the writers. The industry has to grow in a, in a um, collective. So it's not just writing that be excellent when mm. production is not excellent. The writing will not be excellent. The directing is not excellent. The writing cannot shine. If the acting is not excellent, the writing cannot shine. And mm. when, I, when I speak with screenwriters, they, they find that you can write this wonderful story with helicopters, everything, whatever. But when you give it to the producer, he's thinking, oh, wow, how do I fund this? Cut, mm. cut, 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 cut. Mm -hmm. so, at the end of the day, most of the stuff, ambitious um, stuff you put in there gets the stuff. But, but, but I would say that uh, we can do better in writing. It's a challenge in all the films, even the good ones. You can still see writing challenges. Mm. And if it's, it's, it's also tied to how you remunerate writers. So if you pay me, say, 200K to write a film, I'll give you a 200K story, mm. you know. You know, good work takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort, takes a lot of discipline. And what they are paying writers currently, presently, industry um, rates mm -hmm. will not support, you know, you will never the writing that we want to see. Yes, right. yes. So okay. everybody has to grow together. Okay, but looking at um, cinema itself and the movies that went to the cinema, the year mm -hmm. started really slow for movies in the cinema. Yes, it did. But it picked up in the month of April with um, the release of Mokalik, Gold Statue, Fort Republic, and a few others. Mm -hmm. In total, about 25 Nigerian movies were in the cinema in 2019. Did you, well, did you see at least half of them? Yeah, you saw, saw more I than, mean, you guys critiqued <laughs> that. So, First, okay, before you tell me what you um, feel about these movies you saw, how okay. would you say the producers are beginning to accept critics? Because um, initially, when this whole thing started of um, people reviewing movies that went to the cinema, mm. we had some um, Nollywood producers mm. taking it very personal. I remember the issue with Omoni Ebro at some point, <laughs> coming out to say, you put just sit down and critic our work, you don't know the hard work and all that. Funny, it was me. Okay, I mean, <laughs> people came out to the handle that these people you are calling out or seeing as your enemy are very important in yeah. the industry And they're as just well. there to help you. And it's also mm -hmm. a career path. So what would you say the relationship between people like you and the producers are right now? Yeah, it's still a work in progress. I mean, just last night there was a producer going on another rant, you mm -hmm. know, about, you know, this same thing. So every time, you know, like I said before, Nollywood was... Um, the the origins are in video so at that time they were doing videos they were really nobody there was really nobody writing about these things you know but at the time you are graduating to film to the big screen you know that's part of the process you know you put out a film people write it to tell you, you know this is what you did this is how you did it and they have to get used to it there's no because we're only going to get you know more more influential mm -hmm. more more relevant with time and it's something they have to get used to i mean in we talked this year about going to the oscars you mm -hmm. know before you get your film gets to the oscars there must have been critics who have written about it. that's part of the criteria mm -hmm. who have written about it you know on major platforms okay. you know so those conversations are going to keep happening, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that you know even critics get better. So so it's not just about coming to say oh this film is terrible. You know it's about telling us why this film doesn't really work mm -hmm. and why it works. You know, so I feel like you know it's a dance. We're going to there's some give and there's some take, and eventually we are here to stay. So don't worry. Okay.
Okay. So let's talk about the movies that went to the cinema. I mean, okay. you've, you've seen more than half of them. So yes, what do you I've think about it? I've seen almost everything. <laughs> I, I always say this. It's like, like I said before, every five years, it's for the past five years, it's more or less the same thing. You struggle to pick like five really good ones. Um, maybe Out of 24. But yes. I'm going to put you on the wow. spot. You have to give us your five yeah. best. Yeah. <laughs> your five worst. Oh. Yeah, so, but generally though, how, how would you say they, they fared? Yeah, yeah. So, so I was impressed with some, some of the films mm -hmm. I saw I, I saw this year. There's still a lot of work to be done, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, there's no perfect film, so to speak. Okay. But you know, in terms of those places where we can get better, in terms of the storytelling, in terms of the acting, in terms of the production values, uh -huh. technical error, sound, you know, mm. music, we're doing better and better, but I feel like we haven't yet arrived, oh, you know, okay. because when you compare our films with African, other African films, yeah. South Africans, for instance, or even the Francophone countries who understand cinema at its basic level, we can't really compete. Maybe one film, you know, in two years can, mm. you know, maybe one film, two films. So, yeah, there's progress, but we need to understand that we're not there yet. It's easy to congratulate ourselves and say, oh, this film made one million, we're doing this. Mm. But we need but that's, to... that's worrisome. What you just said, that's pretty worrisome for an industry known to be like the third or second um, highest, largest, largest um, film industry in the world mm -hmm. to have, like, in a year, maybe we can't compare two, three, four of our movies to other movies being, being produced in francophone countries. That's pretty worrisome. And it brings me to asking you this. If the script writing is great, mm -hmm. why can't we have a good production and a good directing to the script writing? Why must we cheap out, cheap out, because we're trying to do what? Minimize cost, mm -hmm. maximize profit. What exactly is the issue? What's the challenge with that? Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocates here yeah. now on the part of the industry. Now, the industry, we are not, the Francophone countries, for instance, they have a system where government supports their industry or grants, prefer, um, particularly from Europe. France supports a lot of French um, co-productions in the Francophone regions. We don't have that here. Our system is um, borrowed from Hollywood, which is like the business part, mm. you know, let's just make money. For them, it's not really about, I mean, you make money fine, but the artistic part is very important to them. For us, we want to make money. We haven't yet figured out how to make money mm -hmm. because the industry is still small. We don't, we have like how many cinemas, maybe 40, 50, most of them in Lagos, you know, spread in some diffuse other cities. You know, so it's hard to monetize this film. So when you know that the cap for whatever you get when you put in money into this film is, say, 100 million, you are not going to put in more than, say, 50 million because oh. if you... So, so that's, that's a challenge. So it's a business, first and foremost. That's what we need to understand. And people don't want to just put in money and lose it mm -hmm. because there are no grants from government, there's no grant from America, there's no grant from Europe coming in. So, until the business expands, you know, the budget will now increase. Mm -hmm. And when the budgets increase, the audiences increase and everybody's, you know, able to... So that's a, a, a big challenge, you so know. How, I, I how do you think the, um, the business can improve if nobody's ready to put their money in, everybody's scared? The Don't you think it will just be stagnant because By making better scared. films. How do they you know, make better films if they are scared of putting their money in? Yeah, but you can make better films. You don't necessarily need 100 million naira to make a good film. That's another that's standard thing I keep telling filmmakers. They say money, money, money. I'm like, yeah, money. But you can make a good film at scale, you know. And if the audience, many, our audience, especially in Nigeria, we have this belief about Nollywood that, you know, they're not really serious, uh -huh. you know. So we still have people who find it hard to put money to see a Nigerian film. Uh -huh. Every day I have this conversation with people at the cinemas, why will I pay to watch a Nigerian film? Uh, you know, they, they have their, it's valid for them, but, uh -huh. you know, if you don't put money... I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't put money, you know, producers will not see any reason to come back. And if they keep losing money, then they, they are not able to fund this because for them it's a business. So I think that also they, 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 they have that burden to oh. convince people like you, mm -hmm. you know, that you should come and watch 
you know, our stuff, and our stuff is getting better because it's the same value. You are, you are paying one five or two thousand to watch Black Panther. You're paying you to watch some Nollywood film. Uh -huh. Why would Sometimes you? Sometimes we will pay more these days. You know, mm -hmm. so it's for you. It's cost benefit. You like why should I pay? I mean, support is good, but you know, I just want to have fun and enjoy myself. Mm. So, so you have to put that value on. They have to put that value on their product, on mm. our films, and until we do that consistently, not just one in five months or one in one year, consistently, consistently, people will no longer be afraid to to pay to. Okay, so um, you mentioned the Oscars earlier. Yes. And I think that was one of the biggest news. I mean, that's the biggest news of 2019 mm -hmm. when it comes to Nollywood and what happened in Nollywood. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. would you assess that situation, having to send in a film that they sent back to you to say it's not to standard? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, disqualified, basically. Disqualified, not, to say it's not, not mm, the criteria. To, yeah, so yes. and, and knowing already, that we have the NOSC mm -hmm. already yes. to do this. So mm -hmm. how would you mm -hmm. assess that situation? And in what light would you say it has put Nollywood? Uh, I think every publicity is good publicity, you know. Well, I'm sure a lot of people... I think we keep hiding behind that, but critically looking <laughs> at it. <laughs> no, but I'm sure a lot of people went to watch Lionheart because of all that drama, mm -hmm. you know. That's so good so that's for good for, mm -hmm. for her and her film, and also for Nollywood. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a sticky situation. Um, the committee to select this film. They haven't put out a film in like five years since they started working and mm -hmm. they decided, you know, this film is the closest to, you know, something of standard, international mm -hmm. standard they can put out. And I don't, I don't, um, I don't begrudge them. I don't fault them for trying. I probably would have done the same mm -hmm. because it had the elements, it had um, local languages, mm -hmm. just not up to the standard that, yeah. in Hollywood, um, that the Hollywood people want. And yeah, so they told us, you know, not, it's not really our thing. It's not that your film is bad or good. It's just, it's not really up to our criteria. So it's, it's left for us to now go back and say, you know, who are we making these films for? Mm. You know, if she, make, if she had made the film 100% Igbo, would people have showed up to watch it? Uh -huh. I mean, even the subtitles, people were complaining, <laughs> you know, that, oh, we can't to read these things, you know. So it's also... A challenge, but the, the Oscars debate is that you don't just fall on. I think that's the lesson we should take away. You don't just fall into an Oscar. Mm. It's a deliberate planning. Mm. Sometimes not one year, not two years, not three years. So you have to keep doing these things, and then it happens. So a lot films, of collaborations. Yes, a mm. lot of collaborations, a lot of support. People, films that have gone all the way. Mm. You know, if they tell you how much they've spent, you know, to mm. win an Oscar, it's not, you know. You have to be prepared. Mm. It's, oh, let, yeah. Let's take you back to what Elsie earlier asked. Your top five highly rated uh -huh. and then top five poorly rated Nollywood movie for 2019. Okay, for me, um, I'd, I'll start with the films that, that showed in the cinemas uh -huh. uh, that all were on Netflix or the no, no, streaming. Let's do the cinemas. Cinema. The cinemas, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Um, this year, for me, the number one is easy, The Ghost and the House of Truth. Okay. Not many people saw it. It, yeah. it was directed by Akio Motosho, produced by Ego Buyo. Um, yeah, wonderful film, lovely film, strong acting, solid directing, solid writing. It has everything mm -hmm. you know, you're looking for in a film. That's my number one pick. Um, I would also pick The, the, the Delivery Boy. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, um, it was written, produced, directed by No Dash. He's known for being a cinematographer. Um, yeah, so that's two. I would pick um, Fourth Republic. Okay. Um, Ishaya Bako directed. Mm -hmm. um, it's about politics, mm. you, know, you know. That was pretty well done. Um, uh, Living in Bondage, mm -hmm. probably be number four. Okay. Breaking Free. I thought that it was fun. You know, it's not a perfect film, but for what it was, it worked, you know, mm. fun. You know. I think I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, of yeah, course. Yeah, of well, course. Then the fifth yes. one. The fifth one, the setup, um, mm. Nia Kimolayo directed. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Okay, yo, let's not say la worst mm. five, let's say worst three, so we'll put you on two worst uh, There, Like, I can, like, have worst <laughs> one million. <laughs> okay. I can have worst one million or whatever. Um, so I wouldn't say worst, I would say films that tried, 
had ambition but couldn't quite Come you on, know. critic now don't be critical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't quite deliver there's so many of them you know like so many of them um, survival of Jolili I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> jump, I mean, AY is looking at this already. <laughs> yeah, so AY's film uh, probably Which gets one? stuck. This <clears throat> Merry Man. Two? Uh, yeah. You don't like it. I, <laughs> I mean, I've not seen okay, it. So, but it's one. So I just want to one agree. was <laughs> bad, like really bad. But two was. I mean, it's fun, bad. but. I saw two yesterday and it, I had mm -hmm. fun watching it. Okay. 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 Did, no, I'm not going <laughs> to be a parent. Okay. If you did, so there's, there's this um, film. It's a biopic, the Herbert Macaulay um, affair. Mm. Yeah. That was bad, too. I would say bad. It wasn't as good as it should have been. Okay. Yeah. And then um, there's so many. Um, 1929 was a mess. Was that in the cinema? Um, yeah, it was. Oh, wow. There's so many films that go to the cinema. You, don't, you have you no don't idea. Know. Like, blink and you miss, miss it. Um, I, I, I can't keep remembering this film. Um, so one one Elevator the, Baby. One, the, the, Elevator Baby wasn't was, bad. Was good, I won't put it as the, you know, my other mm -hmm. list. Yeah, it was, but you think it was okay. The Blink, the Blink, the Blink Legosians. The Blink Legosians, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah, it's also on the good part. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, oh, so what would you say I'm about Mokalik? Because people have um, different reactions. Reactions to Mokalik. Yeah, so what would you say? I didn't really like Mokali. Just say you yes. don't like Mokali. Why? No, no, it, it has some it has some good things going for it. Mm -hmm. But but you know, it's a simple enough story, you know, this boy a day, twenty four hours, you mm -hmm. know, can you not tell it as can you not tell it more competently than you did? So that's my pro um, problem with it. We know the director of Kunla for Lion, he always goes for amb um, ambitious, spectacle, mm. you know. But so even when he does that, you can see gaps in there, but you, for, you forgive him because at least he's ambitious, he's trying to do this. But when you now have a, scale, a story at scale, you know, you have everything, just continue, tell this story properly. And I don't think, feel like he did it, you know. Because, I mean, for a lot of people, for someone like me, I didn't really understand what the movie was about. And for <laughs> about 45 minutes, I'm just wondering, yeah. too much jabs, everybody was just... They're yeah, talking it and just like, wasn't put I think together. Yeah. For me, I what think he was it? trying to promote um, the idea of um, um, what's this thing now called? This thing, the no, yeah, no, no, um, having, no, 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 the handwork thing. Mm. So we do not take that serious. We mm -hmm. look at the plumbers, yeah, we look at yeah. the mechanics, we look and at we them as the them. lower people mm -hmm. in society. But in the real sense of it, we will not be sitting on this table even if we're a carpenter. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things like to do. I think said, that was the angle he, needed, he was going to He wanted to, to form, tell his story, but yeah, he, he just probably did not well. do yeah, well. It was it very terrible. I get, the, I get the message all, he was yeah. trying to pass. And I think for Elevator Baby, because I saw it in the cinema, somebody took me there, I think, um, Timini and Tony Abraham. Yeah. yeah. They did, they did uh, fantastic yeah. Yeah. Everybody that yeah. seen that movie said it was really great. good chemistry. Yeah, so it was. The film was obviously a very low budget film, but they try to do a lot. Okay, but money. very quickly before you go, people are complaining about the kind of movies going to Netflix now. I've seen a lot oh. of tweets on that saying they're really <laughs> low quality. Yes. What would you want to see on that very quickly? Because our time is... Oh, it, it's a complicated... Um, I don't think that... I don't know if one minute would be enough. Okay. To, but, but, but I would just try. Um, so it's good that our films are getting out. Mm -hmm. um, there's the argument that Hollywood also has bad films on Netflix. Yeah, yeah right. every country has bad Definitely. films. Definitely. But but if our films are the only our films are not even great to start with. They won't. You know. <laughs> Check out. So, <laughs> so yeah. at least Hollywood, all these countries, they have great films, you mm. know, that they can look. So our films are not even great. And and it 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 gives us a bad, you know, if people now come and see all those films. Yes, producers have to make money, they have to eat, you know, and they have to I agree. Yeah. But can you now you know your films are going on international platforms. Can you raise your standards? You are going to be judged at the same oh, yeah. mm. Nobody's lowering standards for you. Yeah. You're going to be judged at the same criteria everybody else is judged. So can you, you know... Level up. Okay, yes. I wish you had more Level time up. on that, but <laughs> this is how I wrap up on this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can watch this conversation all over again by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. You can also watch it time on Aosu TV and in London on Ben Television. Thank you, as always, you go to my co-anchors, Ewa Uluwa Ritu and Beniak. And of course, our studio guest, Wilfred Okichi. Thank, Thank you, you for being for here. having me. He's still going to be here to talk about um, music. That will be for the next episode. My name is Elsie Godwin. See you later.